What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Chad Rubin, who's also a friend of Steve, has come to one of them. Check out rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran, and it's application only. Today, I'm excited. We have Steve Weiss. He's CEO and co-founder of Mute6. In just under three years, they've built a team of over 20 people, and their company uses online advertising like Facebook and Google Ads for e-commerce customer acquisition. They help build high-volume lead generation funnels. Basically, they help get businesses more customers. That's what everyone wants, right? Steve, they have worked yes, with sir. brand, right? They worked with brands and companies like MeUndies, USA Today, Headspace and many more. Steve, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. I mean, you probably tell people up front, don't expect this, right? So what should they expect for a low ticket e-commerce product as far as a positive return? At what point should they look at getting a positive return? Compared to, I mean, the first purchase seems like the golden yeah. gem out there. There's not every, you, everyone is not going to be a pre heels. Everyone's not. Yeah, gonna yeah, be a, for sure. What's you what's know, normal? Like when you educate someone, like here's what you should expect for so this low ticket e commerce. I, I really like. I'm one of those guys that just loves breaking down the process to people who've yeah. never marketed on Facebook yeah. before. I, I want Hit I me. want to create an educated yeah. person at the end of the at the other end of the line. So what yeah. I like to say is. Let's set KPIs or key performance indicators and or goals okay. around specific, you know, audiences. Like I know like that your remark we know like right away remarketing will probably work. We know that we could probably spend, you know, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month profitably. Like, pretty confident we could do that on Facebook. Now the question is, is with most brands, everyone wants to spend a lot of money and also get a return. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't just want to spend a lot of money. No, I want to get a no return. No one wants to spend money and not get a return. So everyone's like, yeah, well, that's great that you got me profitable at 20K a month. And well, how can you get me profitable at 100K a month? How can you get me profitable at 200K a month? So the key that I always like to say is, is like, I'm a big believer in managing expectations. So I'm like, right. you know, most likely, yeah, you'll see some wins if you have a decent product and you already have an audience to your website, you'll see some wins pretty quickly. But Again, the, the true goal is how do we scale your product? You know, how do we generate new customers at scale? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for that, that customer or that person you're kind of educating, it's not normal to get their first purchase as a positive ROI. You know, no. so do you only, do you tell them, don't expect this, but when we remarket it, that's when you should expect, or do they have to be remarketed then shopping cart abandoned and that like at what point is it normal for someone to get a positive return well there's no sadly there's no recipe for success yeah. i think that like you hire you have it at mute six come on <laughs> <laughs> you hire a team like us to figure out what that recipe is you know you know and i think like at the end of the day every single product whether you're doing lead gen or or e-commerce or yeah. mobile apps every single product has its own kind of path to success and you know, we're going to figure out, you know, how many impressions or how many touch points that user is going to, you know, is going to need before they make a conversion. We're going to figure out, you know, which audience segmentation, you know, is going to drive the highest engage rate, which audience is going to generate the highest ROI, you know, post engagement rate, which audience is going to drive the biggest ROAS. I mean, there's so many elements that go into this yeah. that, like, we want to not only, like, you know, figure figure out all these you know, figure out all these paths to success. Yeah. But we also want to, you know, whoever we work with, we want them to be in the weeds and we want to educate them in terms yeah. of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Yeah. I'll ask you an easier question, Steve. This one's easier. 
biggest mistake because you probably go in and people are trying Facebook ads or never maybe the, you know maybe they have maybe they haven't but what's the biggest mistakes you see people making on Facebook for e-commerce specifically um the biggest mistake like I see you go on you're like why are you even doing this you're burning you, do money you want, do you want very granular or do you want high level uh, start with granular I want to hear what All right, so yeah. the biggest mistake, yeah. a lot of companies are not excluding audience network in their ads. Okay. <laughs> so Facebook will optimize your placement around the placement that's getting the highest click-through rate or the highest possible rate to, to a conversion. And they charge you a specific amount of money to find the customer that's most likely to do the action you want. Yeah. Well, they def when you create an ad in Ads Manager Power, they default to serving your ad on an audience network. <laughs> <laughs> and I always suggest like there's a lot of I know industry terminology, but basically they're going to serve your ad to people who are clicking the most because they're finding yeah. it relevant, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. In, in a way, that's, that's that's the case, and a lot of people don't turn off audience network. Audience network is Facebook, which may so not be a fit like to yeah. buy the product, but they are clicking. Well, it. is the inventory right? is not good. The inventory is not as good as Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, the audience network is the, the Facebook ad network. So audience network is Facebook ads that live on other third-party websites. Yeah. So people are You're confused. You can look it up. But keep going. Yeah. yeah. So like you have to turn off audience network. Okay. Just turn it off. And in most cases, when you turn it off, you'll see your conversion rate will go up because so you're getting a lot better inventory on Facebook, and mm -hmm. you're not getting that inventory unless you turn off audience network. Yeah. So turn off audience network. What else? What are other big mistakes are people making? Uh, the other big mistakes is they're they're not segmenting their audiences. They're serving the same free ad or for discount ad mm -hmm. to people that are already customers of, mm. the, of their of their brand. Bad. I'm like, <laughs> Bad. No, yeah. Exclude. <clears throat> you need to exclude all your customers on your prospecting campaigns. Whenever you're looking or hunting for new customers, exclude your current customers, or you will piss them off. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a huge mistake I see. Like, don't give away stuff for free to someone who's already spent. Right. I already dollars. bought this, and then now you're giving it away to discount <laughs> other people. Yeah, that, that's not gonna like get anyone to be your friend. You know, it's, it's <laughs> so segmenting but, is a big problem. People aren't segmenting. No, yeah, a lot of people are segmenting. Um, you know, add to cart. You know, you're sending a lot of people to your add to cart, and you're not actually building an audience around add to cart. You should be building an audience around add to cart. You know, and then drumming, you know, driving specific ads to people who've been banned. Mm -hmm. Any other big mistakes you see people making out there? Uh, let's see. Something I would say email. I would say, email. What do you mean? I would say people are not using Facebook to gather emails. I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but I would say that Facebook is a great source to drum up, you know, your own audience data, and mm -hmm. I think that. People aren't leveraging lead ads to the power that it is. Lead ads is a very powerful system that we've had a ton of success with. And I think like – So ads where people click and then they subscribe type of thing? Yeah, like so, a, like, so lead ads allows you to you know, create, a lead, um, create a lead capture window inside of your ads mm -hmm. but without leaving Facebook. It's, yeah. only, it's only on mobile, so I would say that you, know, you should do that. Um, totally do lead ads. Another thing that I suggest is – Creating different ads for Instagram. I see a lot of people using the same exact Facebook ads also on Instagram. Really? Instagram's a different user. So I'd say creating a different user experience for Instagram. Yeah. Um, another thing is a uh, huge mistake is people don't reply to comments. They don't people, reply to comments? Yeah, negative. Yeah, you, you have to reply to all the comments on your ads. Oh, I see. So people neglect the people who are actually commenting and engaged. Yeah, they don't say a word. Yep. So whoever's managing your page, I say definitely. <laughs> Get in there. Yeah, you've already Fuck paid content. for them. Yeah, you might as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Headspace. Those are the main things. I mean, Headspace yeah. worked well when you did Headspace, right? With lead yeah, was that about, leader? Yeah, we, we worked with them when they first started out. It's about three years ago. Yeah. And they're big. They're, yeah, they were very, very brand conscious. They, they create amazing content. And they really like were really interested in their customer. They yeah. really, you know, did a lot to nurture this customer through their Headspace process. Yeah. Um, do, do you meditate? No, but I've heard of Headspace. <laughs> yeah, for I, I use. <clears throat> do you use meditate? App, yeah, I use the app every morning. And, really? <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm a big believer that like to market something, you, you got to be a user of the product. You got to yeah. just you're into something, you got to use it. You got to be, you, know, you just got to go all the way in. And I, 
Yeah, I, I mean, totally think, picture you with like the women's razors just testing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. All my pink, you know, pink razors all over my bathroom. <laughs> the, but, uh, so the headspace, the new subscriber, is that what worked well for them? The lead ads? Yeah. That's so, yeah, we did a lot of exclusions, so we exclude all their current customers from all of our ads, and we we had different ads that brought people in. You know, six you know six session trial, and you know, you know we and then we'd have a different another set of ads that would go from free trialist to uh, you know paid user. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That really that was like early on with Facebook. They two three years ago, like Facebook did not look and feel like it is today from an ad perspective. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the tools that we would use today, you know, like dynamic product ads and some carousel ads, like a lot of that didn't exist. <laughs> didn't wasn't even available. Yeah. What are some software tools people should consider using um, with Facebook, whether it's retargeting or tracking for e-commerce? What are some ones that you recommend? Ooh, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, people always like software and tools lists, so look them up. So what? Yeah, where should so we send them? You wanted. So and I know a lot of people use Smartly.io. That's for like very large budgets. Okay. We don't use that in house, but I I think they have a really good tool set. Okay. They built on top of Facebook. That's Smartly.io. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, Looker, L O O K E R. Mm-hmm. Um, they do LTV and attribution, so they're a really good tool if you really want to understand the LTV on mm-hmm. your that's on huge. Your head. Yeah. Yeah. Looker is a really really cool tool. Like let's say you capture an email address off an ad and that email then purchases and you want to assign a dollar value from that purchase all the way back up to the ad. Yeah, yeah. So Looker is a really good tool for that that we've we've worked with in the past. Um, mobile, I mean, if you have a mobile app or mobile app attribution, we've used, uh, I think we've used Cochava in the past and we've also used um, Has Offers. Those are tool, tools that are really good for attribution where you want to attribute an install or a conversion all the way back up the funnel, yeah. back to the Facebook ad. Yeah. And uh, what else do we use? Uh, those are the, those are the three that. Anything three personally that you like to use, just for like productivity or just to to manage the business, because you have you know twenty over twenty staff that you have to manage, and your personal life and the business. What do you like to use? Just software, just tools, software, so or I mean, apps I use, or something. Uh, yeah, I use Apple Notes. Apple Notes controls my day. Really? Okay. <laughs> I know that that sounds crazy, but um, yeah. Apple Notes. I use Headspace. Headspace, Headspace is my uh, my meditation app. Mm-hmm. Um, I use Runkeeper to track all my runs. I like mm-hmm. I like going out running. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do I use? I use um, I use I use Body. Uh, what is this thing called? Hold on a second. Bodybuilding.com. I use their app for workout for different types of workouts. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at some of my biggest apps for productivity. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Steve, I could, I could talk to you uh, all day. I know you have a, a couple meetings you have to get to. Yeah. So what should we leave people with for Mute 6? I mean, obviously, okay. we've talked a lot about the different successful campaigns and some of the mistakes. What else that should people know about Mute 6 and what you do over there? Yeah, so you know, I'm a big believer in empowering people to become better entrepreneurs. Like, I, I'm on a mission to share like all my learnings and information that I've taken from you know running so many campaigns. So I encourage like anyone to like reach out to me directly if you have any questions about how to leverage Facebook as a platform. I also have a deep experience in email marketing and drip marketing, as well as hmm. obviously Google AdWords and ad and anything Google related as far as ads. Yeah. Um, so I think that like without working with us, you know, directly, if you just have any questions, you just wanted some insight on a specific topic, I always say just reach out to us because yeah. you know there's gonna be something that I might need to learn from you. I think we all have a unique skill set and something unique we bring to the table. Yeah, yeah, that's very generous of you, Steve. Um, yeah. So people should check out mute6.com, right? M-U-T-E-S-I-X.com. Anywhere else we should send people online. Uh, we have a we have a podcast called ten ten thousand dollar ten k a day podcast. Yeah. that's on our website. It's so good. it's uh it's short but sweet. Yeah, it's <laughs> so we do about two podcasts a week on everything Facebook ads, e commerce, customer acquisition related. So yeah. anything new that comes out, we talk about it on our podcast. We dive into it. Um, 
you know, we have our blog, which gets, you know, we produce two or three new content pieces a week. And I also just have a, a personal blog that I, I blog on some more like personal issues. And that's stephenjweiss.com. Yeah. And if you, you know, want to get to know me as, on, a, on a personal level, that's pretty much my personal blog. And music. It gets podcast. personal. It gets real personal. Actually. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, I think that the more you share, the more you trust people. And I think the more you trust people, people will trust you. Why mute six? I, you know, I never set out to start an agency, yeah. and I always thought I did not want to be called like something media or something internet marketing this. And I was like, I want to be something unique that people like, yeah. you know, kind of ask, what does that mean? <laughs> and like, I found out there's a, there's a solar system. So you know, I looked up the space. I'm like, there's got to be a name of some solar system that, you know, oodles and oodles away. And there was a there's a solar system I found called Mute. That's just the name was Mute. I know it doesn't sound like an agency name because you want to be loud and I'm not actually, you know, but then in the solar system, there were six planets. Hmm. So I put the two together. It was Got called it. Mute Six. All right. Love it. <laughs> Steve, thank you. I want to be the first one to thank you so much for your time, knowledge. Yeah. Everyone should check out Mute6.com. Fantastic, Steve. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, we'll talk soon, Jim. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See, life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand